Tony Livella Longa works as a security guard and enforcer of order at the Copacabana nightclub in 1962 in New York City. He is referred to as Tony Lip because of his incredible ability to bullshit or people into doing things they don't want to. He makes the necessary sacrifices in order to provide for his family. He throws one of the men onto the ground when they start to fight, and when he tries to fight back, he hits him a couple times in the face. He pays the coat check employee to steal a wealthy customer's expensive hat so that he may discover it and give the owner a very generous tip. Tony loses his job when the club closes for a few months to undergo refurbishments. He and his wife, Dolores, are struggling to pay the rental and maintain their two children's home's roof. Dolores offers the two black guys lemonade when they come to fix the sink, but Tony discards their cups after they have used them, much to Dolores' dismay. To afford rent, Tony enters a hot dog eating competition and makes $50. He goes to Carnegie Hall for his job interview as a doctor's driver thanks to an old contact. He gets to the theater hall by mistake but, told to finds an apartment upstairs by hall keeper. It is intricate and loaded with global memorabilia. Don Shirley, MD he is a concert pianist rather than a doctor of medicine. He wants a driver for a concert tour that will take him from the Midwest to the Deep South but he especially asked around for someone who could manage difficulties because he knows there will be prejudice directed at him. The two-month tour comes to a close just before Christmas. Tony agrees if paid well enough when asked if he can spend so much time away from his family. However, Tony objects, claiming he is not a servant, when Dr. Shirley demands that he be ready to have his shoes shined and his clothes ironed. He gets ejected by Dr. Shirley. After failing the interview, Tony returns to a restaurant where a few gang leaders he knows from the nightclub offer him illegal work. He declines, claiming to have money and savings. The following morning, Dr. Shirley makes a call to Tony's residence and requests to speak with Dolores. He inquires as to her comfort level over her husband's extended absence. He offers Tony the position when she accepts. Tony is really unhappy when Dolores wants him to write her letters. If Dr. Shirley misses a concert, he will lose the money, so the record company lends Tony a lovely car, pays him half up front, and says he'll get the other half at the end of the trip. Additionally, they give him the Green Book, a travel guide and directory of safe hotels in the South for African Americans. Tony is a communicator and a windbag, and he frequently bothers Dr. Shirley during the trip. Dr. Shirley advises Tony to use an alternative last name and attempt to communicate more clearly among the people as they get closer toward their first live show, but Tony insists he won't change his manner of speaking and will instead wait outside. He admires Dr. Shirley's intelligence as he listens to him play the piano while standing outside. After that, he gambles with the other employees who are also outside, and Dr. Shirley becomes furious with him for acting in such a disgusting manner. Tony asks Dr. Shirley why he is being so difficult with him and not the other help, and Dr. Shirley responds that Tony had the choice to stay inside unlike the other help. When Tony realizes that Dr. Shirley is unfamiliar with contemporary music like Aretha Franklin while listening to it on the radio in the car, he is surprised. Dr. Shirley's race is a point of contention for him. So when he passes a Kentucky Fried Chicken and learns that Dr. Shirley has never tried fried chicken, he pulls over. Dr. Shirley is coerced into eating the chicken in a fun manner. Dr. Shirley helps Tony improve the letters he writes to Dolores because they are terrible and need to be more poetic and lovely. At a later stop, Tony discovers a gemstone being sold on the ground and takes it with him. Dr. Shirley orders him to return the gemstone, even though Tony thinks it's theft. Dr. Shirley must stay in Black's only hotels as they travel through the South apart from Tony. Dr. Shirley is drinking alone in the hotel, feeling cut off from the other guests. Tony sees Dr. Shirley being attacked by white patrons at a local bar after receiving a call that a fight is taking place there. Insisting they release him, Tony reaches for a gun and threatens to fire. They barely make it out, and Dr. Shirley queries whether he actually carries a pistol. Dr. Shirley is instructed not to leave his side by Tony, who responds, of course not. The host of the next concert, which takes place at a southern home, is quite cordial to Dr. Shirley. He ordered fried chicken to be made by the kitchen staff for dinner. Dr. Shirley requests to use the restroom during intermission, but the host tells him to use the outhouse instead of the indoor facilities. Tony drives Dr. Shirley back to his hotel so that he may use the restroom there because he won't use the outhouse. The two approach a suit shop on their way to the next destination, and when Dr. Shirley notices a suit in the display, Joe suggests he get it. The shopkeepers decline to offer Dr. Shirley a suit as soon as they walk in. That evening, Tony is summoned to a disturbance at a nearby YMCA where Dr. Shirley and another man have been detained after the gym manager allegedly found them doing inappropriately. To get Dr. Shirley out of trouble, Tony pays off the police. 
Tony encounters the mob in the subsequent town. They instruct Tony to resign and join them in Italian in front of Dr. Shirley. Tony consents to meet them later that evening for a drink. Dr. Shirley presents Tony with a raise and a promotion as they check into their hotel. Dr. Shirley shows that he speaks Italian as Tony rejects his invitation. Tony states that he was never going to accept the position and that he would meet them and inform them right away. The doctor feels relieved. He nervously apologizes to Tony for the incident the previous evening, but Tony responds by explaining that he has worked in New York City nightclubs for years and is aware of how complex the world is. Don keeps helping Tony with his letters, which continue to dazzle Dolores and the rest of his family. They are stopped one night by the local police as they travel to their destination in Mississippi. They are informed by the redneck cop that Don is not permitted to be out after sunset. When the police asks Tony for his ID and Tony responds with his New York driver's license, they are both coerced out of the car and frisked. Tony responds that his last name is Vallelonga and that he is only partially Italian when the officer inquires about the meaning of his last name. Tony is called half a nigger by the racist police officer. Tony strikes the redneck policeman in the face right away, and both he and Don are then detained and hauled to jail. Don is furious with Tony in their cell because Tony's temper ruined them the show. Since he didn't do anything wrong, Don requests to make a phone call. He is allowed by the cops. Shortly after, the governor calls the police in a rage, and they reluctantly release both Tony and Don. Don tells Tony that he called Robert Kennedy, the U.S. Attorney General. That amazes Tony, but Don is indignant. He is humiliated that a person of such importance now regards him as a troublemaker. The two men get into a strong disagreement over all of their differences, Tony sees Don as a man who won't work on himself, and Don sees Tony as someone who always appears to complicate things for him and doesn't fit anywhere. If I'm not black enough, white enough, or male enough, then what am I, Don yells at Tony. When the two get to the final performance location, a different hotel, Don is guided to a small closet that they refer to as his dressing room. When Don shows up to join them, the concierge forbids him from eating there, so Tony eats in the dining room with the band members. Don won't participate in any activities unless he can dine in the dining room. Tony pulls the concierge away to speak with him since the concierge won't let him. The concierge tries to buy Don's cooperation, despite Tony's best efforts to reason with him. Don walks in and offers to do the performance if Tony wants to, knowing that he won't get paid until the tour is over. Despite the concierge's cries, Tony stays with Don, and the two leave the gig. They proceed to a black-only bar down the block. Two black adolescents observe Don buy a round of drinks while he flashes his wallet loaded with cash. Don joins the jazz band and starts playing piano after some coaxing. They are about to be robbed when Tony notices the two kids lurking behind their car and fires two bullets into the air to scare them off, showing he had a gun the entire time. In an effort to arrive on Christmas Eve, Tony and Don start their journey back to New York. There is a lot of snow and the weather is quite nasty. They are stopped again. But this time the officer only informs them that one of their tires is slipping. Don drives them the remaining distance to Tony's apartment while he sleeps because Tony can't stay up any longer and can hardly see through the snow. Tony admits he won't make it home and falls asleep. Tony invites him to go home, but the man declines when he wakes him up. To his family's surprise, Tony goes upstairs. Don enters his lavish abode once more and sits by himself. He eventually makes his way to Tony's house, where Dolores enthusiastically embraces him and expresses gratitude for helping Tony with his letters while the majority of his family is a little perplexed. The postscript indicates that Tony actually rose to the position of mater at the Copa, and Dr. Shirley continued to enjoy success in the music industry. They stayed close throughout the rest of their lives. Well, that's all for today's video, we hope you enjoyed it, and please support us by subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notification for new videos every we post.